everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about some more books that I have read recently. So once again, really quickly, as in my last recent reads video, I apologize for the background. I'm in the middle of moving. I'm trying to film this before the sun sets, but the lighting's probably going to change because she's going down real quick. But all I could find was one umbrella from my two umbrella lights. So we're just gonna try and make the best of this situation. And I think that was all I, oh, also it's kind of echoey. So I apologize for that. But I have done a lot of reading recently. So I literally just filmed my last recent reads video and I have four, five more, why can't I speak? Five more books to talk about. So these are all the books that I'm going to be talking about today. I will be keeping it spoiler free, but if there is a particular book that you'd like to hear about, I will have timestamps in the description box down below. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first book that I have to talk about today is one that I was really excited for. I've mentioned it in like TBR videos, being really excited for it. And I finally read it and it did not disappoint, thankfully. And that is Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. So I actually found out this is going to have a sequel, which is super exciting. Definitely looking forward to that whenever it's going to come out. But this follows, it's like Princess Diaries. It follows a girl who finds out that she is actually, like she doesn't know who her father is and she ends up finding out that her father is actually the crown prince of Japan. So she ends up going to Japan to meet her father to get involved in court life like she was never expecting and wow is it a wild ride. And it also features a romance with the guard so like oh my goodness and it's an enemies to lovers sort of thing like I love it. That's kind of my like cup of tea with enemies to lovers is exactly what happens in this book. This book was totally immersive. Like I felt like I was in Japan. I was completely immersed in the Japanese culture and it actually had me like researching a lot of the history of Imperial Japan and like emperors and all of that stuff because I didn't really know a lot about it and it was really interesting to learn about. So I had so much fun reading this. Like it is set in Tokyo but also in Kyoto and it was just, I felt like I was brought there. Like to each of the places I felt like I was there alongside the main character and she was such a pleasure to hear about. Izumi provides a beautiful lens to see this all through because she's kind of taking everything in stride. I feel like obviously that's really overwhelming. Like there's a lot of pressure on her now. She all of a sudden has media attention and she's going through so much, but she still manages to be a kind and like just great character to follow. One of the things that I was really pleasantly surprised by was her father. So I was kind of expecting her father to be like really standoffish. Just like, I felt like that was kind of the way that the story was going to go, but her father was so sweet too. So this was just like a great story of love in all aspects aspects like friendship love, familial love, actual love. It was just steeped in love. And honestly, it's not a story that has a ton of conflict. There is obviously some conflict there to move the story along, but for the most part, it was just a joyful, happy, and lighthearted read, which is exactly what I wanted from it. Honestly, if you're looking for something fun and that is really lighthearted and an easy read that has a great romance, great main character, like everything about it, it's just a blast to read. You can look no further than this book. It is really good. So after that, I ended up picking up In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. This is another book I was really, really excited for because it's described as Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue meets Pirates of the Caribbean. So I think a lot of people were expecting this to be a gay pirate story, but it's not really focused on pirates. Like pirates are a part of the story, but it kind of goes a more fantastical route. So this is really an interesting fantasy because it's not so much like, this is a high fantasy, but it reads more like a sweet love story. And it's once again, actually a story that there's a lot of love going on here. So you have the prince who is the main character. What's his name again? Tal. In Prince Tal, he like has this really big family. He has all these brothers and sisters and they are all so sweet. Like they are really loving. And it was nice to see such a supportive family in a fantasy story. Like even his mother, like in him being gay, it was never a thing. It wasn't like something he had to like come out and it was this big topic. He's just gay. And it was really nice to have that just be like casual as it should be. I don't want to say too much about like the direction the story went because I wasn't really expecting it. And I think it might be a little bit spoilery, but I liked the fantastical way that it ended up going with 
like the characters, if that makes sense. If you've read it, I feel like you'll know what I'm talking about, but I just don't want to like accidentally spoil anyone. But I will say that I felt like the world building was a little bit lacking. I never felt like I really fully understood the world and like what like creatures existed in it, what it really was. And it read kind of like a more Victorian style fantasy world, but I still just never felt like I quite grasped it. Grasped? Did I say that weird? I don't know. But magic is also a part of this story and magic is something that's very feared. And I felt like that wasn't really like, I didn't fully get it. So that's kind of where I had an issue mostly was the world building. Because other than that, it was a really sweet romance that was like so nice to read about and I just loved all the love in this story. I just felt like the fantastical element could have been done a little bit better. I think where it really suffered is that the world building wasn't as elaborate as I felt like it should have been because the main focus of the conflict is based in that world, like it's political. So not really fully understanding the world made it kind of difficult to get a full grasp on that conflict. But overall, it was like a really easy and light, fluffy, high fantasy read. Definitely a sweet story that I really liked. So going from that in like sweet and fun reads, I decided to pick up Early Departures by Justin A. Reynolds, which is definitely not fun. I mean, no, I shouldn't say that. This was heavy, okay? It deals with grief and death and loss and it was just a very, very heavy story. And obviously going into it, I was expecting that. This is my second Justin A. Reynolds book and I really liked this one. I think I might, I don't know if they're like the same because I really enjoyed Opposite of Always as well, but I'm not sure how I would rank them. Both of them are really fantastic and worth the read. Now he writes contemporaries with a twist and in this case you follow the main character Jamal and his best friend Q. They have gotten into a fight and he actually ends up dying and he is actually able to come back for a short period of time with this reanimation technology that has come about. So he is able to come back and like say his final goodbyes and have like that fight not be the last interaction that they have. So obviously you know it's going to be a really sad story because you know it's going to have a tragic ending, but that didn't make it any less hard hitting and emotional and just absolutely heartbreaking. Like it, it dealt with grief and loss so well, but it also, while having those heavy topics and like making me think so much about loss, because even the main character Jamal, apart from mourning the loss of Q, he's also mourning the loss of his parents. His parents died when he was younger and that is something that he's never really dealt with. He's never recovered from and you see that eating away at him and as he is developing to start to overcome that over the course of this book. At the same time, this managed to be a really light and hopeful story which is a very interesting contrast. I felt like there were so many moments that were sweet and heartwarming, even though I knew it was like a ticking time bomb because I knew it was going to break my heart in the end. It also managed to make me happy throughout reading it as much as it was really heavy. It's just like when I finished it, I felt like it literally had punched me in the face. Like I was like, oh my God, <laughs> because it is just so heavy on loss. So if that is something that like you might struggle with, like loss and grief, then I wouldn't recommend this. But otherwise, I think this is a fantastic book that might kind of help you understand and like get past grief if that is something that you might be struggling with. I would say though, like keep in mind where your mental state is because it's quite draining to read. It took me a while to pick up something after this. And actually moving on to that next book, the book that I ended up picking up after, I ended up DNFing and that is what it's Not to Love by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. So I'm so sad that this one didn't work out for me because I love this cover. I guess some people really hate it, but I honestly love it. But it's an academic enemies to lovers story and it just... Enemies to Lovers isn't my favorite, okay? And actually, I was reading the author, like blurbs, or not blurbs, but their bio, and they actually had a high school rivalry of their own. And I thought that was really interesting that this kind of seems like their love story. Like they've written quite a few, but this one seems like the closest to their own love story. Unfortunately though, Enemies to Lovers is not my favorite. And this was pretty much everything I hate about Enemies to Lovers. 
it's a slow burn and like I just don't like when they are like so hating each other and that's all they're talking about. The only interactions between these two characters was them bickering and her talking about how much she hated him. So like I never really got a glimmer except for other people like her friends and family being like oh you're gonna end up together like you like each other it's just like blah blah blah. Like other than that I, I did not feel like they liked each other. I just felt like they hated each other and I got almost 40% of the way through and there was no sign of that changing and I was like no because I also found the character to be really annoying. I just did not like her so it made it that much harder to read and there was this plot line of them having to plan this reunion together but like most of the book they just weren't together and I mean obviously I only read 40% of it but like that still is a fair amount for there to be no hint of their relationship changing like nothing really that much happening like it's them trying to get into they both want to get to Harvard so they're competing to plan this reunion to try and get a recommendations letter to Harvard and they're competing for valedictorian like they've always competed but like I don't know I just the other thing is I recently read Today Tonight Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon which is also Academic Enemies to Lovers and I just enjoyed that one so much more because I felt like they didn't seem that much like I mean they were definitely enemies but it was a fun rivalry because they still like talked for them they literally only talked when they had to and they just like hated each other the entire way so yeah it didn't work out for me unfortunately but if you really like Enemies to Lovers then it might work out for you. I actually am going through these books a lot faster than I usually do for recent reads videos which is really exciting because the sun is very quickly descending but the final book that I had to talk about today is Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. I once again this is a book that I have been so excited for leading up to its release. It came out fairly recently and I knew that I had to read it because I was kind of thinking of what I wanted to read next and I was like I think historical and I knew that this was it. So to preface this I as a child had a fascination with shipwrecks and it wasn't specifically the Titanic even. It came from and I don't know if I just learned about it because like I live in the Great Lakes area but we learned about the Edmund Fitzgerald in grade three and I had I was fascinated by it. I spent hours like googling stuff about it, hours on the phone with my one friend playing Sims and googling the Edmund Fitzgerald and then I mean also obviously I googled some other shipwrecks like I looked into the Titanic and stuff but since then I just I don't know I've been fascinated by them and what is it tonight on the Titanic the uh, magic treehouse story that was my favorite so I was so excited to have a YA book that is set on the Titanic and this once again didn't disappoint I'm really glad to say. So it follows twins who are acrobats and the main character Valora she ends up actually sneaking onto the Titanic to find her brother and she sneaks on because the woman that she used to be uh, working for she died so then she sneaks on in her place and it's just like this whole thing and she finds her brother and this is actually based on the fact that recently some evidence came out it was recently revealed that there were actually eight Chinese passengers on the Titanic and six of them survived. You're following Valora who is a British Chinese woman who is dealing with a lot of prejudice at that time like a lot of this was really difficult to read about how her and her friends who are also Chinese how they are treated but there were some kind of glimmers of light with some of the characters here. This wasn't really what I was expecting because obviously I knew it was going to be a tragic story. I knew it was going to be really sad and break my heart but most of it is just life on the Titanic and a lot of it you can kind of forget that it's set on the Titanic. Like there were moments where I forgot it was set on the Titanic. I was just so engrossed in these characters and the love between them. This focuses on family love and found family too and there is a little bit of a romance but I felt like most of the focus were on those platonic relationships which I really enjoyed that. I thought that Valora was a great character to read about. I loved her. She was spunky. She will stop at nothing to get what she wants. Like she is determined to go to America. She's determined to show that she can be an acrobat there and make a new life there and that is her main focus and she is doing anything she can to get to that. Now I think the ending of this is going to be very divisive but I personally enjoyed it and like I had some trouble reading this. If you watch my reading vlog then you know because I kept on stopping and googling for hours. Like I fell back into that thing 
that I did when I was a kid and just googled shipwrecks for hours and hours and hours and I loved the fact that she wrote this book as a way to honor those Chinese passengers that never got the chance to tell their stories. Like immediately after being rescued, they were sent away. They weren't given the same opportunity and the same respect as the other survivors, which is just absolutely horrible. So I loved the fact that Stacey and Lee told their story. And this was just like so well done because while you could forget that it was set on the Titanic, it was very well researched and also showed me a lot of what life was, like the different decks and everything. There's actually maps in the beginning of this too and the different classes. And obviously like there is quite a bit known about that and how like the third class passengers, how they were so much worse off than the first class. And it just was such a well thought out story, honestly. And it, didn't surprise me because like I expected to like it but I just didn't expect it to be what it was but in the best way so I think this definitely is my favorite Stacey Lee book that I have read so far I think there's only one other of hers that I have yet to read but I'm gonna have to pick that one up soon for sure okay so those are all the five books that I have read most recently that I wanted to talk to you guys about so I don't know if I will have another recent reads video filmed here at the old place. I might because I've been reading quickly. Like right now I am reading People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry and I am I'm about halfway through with this one. So I don't know how my reading is going to go because we're definitely going to need to get down to it with packing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. If you have read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts on them. And I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!